Well, welcome and hey there. In this screencast, we're going to spend about 10 or 15 minutes looking at the trigonometry that I would hope a calculus student knows. Trigonometry that a calculus student should know. Uh, it's a primer. It's not comprehensive. If you remember more than this, great. If you remember less than this, well, maybe great. But this is the stuff that I think is important for a college student to know. You should know these triangles. The dreaded pi over 4, pi over 4, pi over 2 right triangle, and the equally dreaded pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 2 right triangle. Uh, the pi over 4, pi over 4, pi over 2, the 45, 45, 90, is the one where you take a square and you cut it along the diagonal. Oh, really? They, they delete one by one? Really? Okay. Uh, in this case, the ratio of the sides is 1 to 1, because those are congruent angles. And then Pythagoras tells me that this is square root of 2. So the ratio is 1 to 1 to square root of 2. And that helps us find things like the sine of pi over 4. And the sine of pi over 4 is the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. Opposite to hypotenuse is 1 over radical 2. And it's fine to leave it in that form for me. Uh, some people are going to rationalize, and that's fine. Uh, over here, what we've really done is we've really taken an equilateral triangle and bisected one of the angles, which also bisects the opposite side and is also perpendicular to the opposite side, so it's a nice altitude there. Uh, in this case, the equilateral triangle has side length 2. This gets bisected, so that's a 1, and Pythagoras tells me that that's root 3. So if I want to know what the cosine of pi over 3 is, well, cosine of pi over 3, that's the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, that's one half, no need to rationalize anything. And then tangent of pi over 3, well, that's the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side, that's radical 3 over 1, or just plain radical 3. Uh, some people memorize things like SOHCAHTOA where sine is opposite over hypotenuse and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse and tangent is opposite over adjacent. And that's fine as long as you do it right all the time. The only issue I have with SOHCAHTOA is that it doesn't work well for all of the reciprocal functions, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. You get something like choshikao, which never really caught on as a mnemonic device. So mnemonic devices are awesome, but you really ought to know what they are and why they exist. So that's just my, my personal take. On, on mnemonics. Uh, not only do we have to know about sines and cosines of pi over 4 and the like, we have to know how to do things like that. You have to know the cosine of 5 pi over 6, or you have to know how to get the cosine of 5 pi over 6, because there are going to be problems in a calculus class where you cannot use a calculator, but you have to know the cosine of 5 pi over 6. So now 5 pi over 6, that's 150 degrees, because, oh, because that's 180 degrees, 180 over 3, 180 over 6 is 30 times 5. So. 150 degrees. So here's the deal. I'm going to yodel and stop at 150 degrees. Ready? Yodely, yodely, yodely. There we go. Right there. That's 150 degrees. This is 5 pi over 6. So if you remember from your high school study, we drop a perpendicular and we look at this reference angle. That's pi over 6. We look at that reference angle, and we say that whatever the cosine of this reference angle is, is the same as the cosine of 5 pi over 6. So we know that the sides of the pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 2 right triangle are in the ratio of 1, radical 3, and 2. Uh, this 1 extends up in a positive direction. This radical 3 extends left in a negative direction. So cosine is the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, and that's minus root 3 over 2. Similarly, 
I could ask you to find the sine of negative 3 pi over 4. Negative just means that we're going clockwise, so right there. You get a, a backwards yodeling right there. You drop the perpendicular to the x-axis, and you look at this reference angle. That should say pi over 4. That's a terrible pi over 4, but that's what it should say. I uh, can't get my pen to be small enough. Ratio of the sides is 1 to 1 to radical 2. Hypotenuses are positive by definition. Both this one and that one extend in negative directions. Sine is the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. And we get that. If you rationalize, we get that. Those are things you should know how to do as an entering calculus student. Um, you should also be aware. This is the biggest of the Pythagorean identities. And it comes from the fact that if I take the unit circle, the circle of radius 1 centered at the origin, and I take any point on the unit circle, that angle theta, this point is cosine theta and sine theta. That is to say, the horizontal distance is cosine theta, and the vertical distance is sine theta and the radius of the circle is 1. So sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is 1 comes out pretty clearly from there. You should also be aware that 1 plus tangent squared theta is secant squared theta, and you should know that cotan squared theta plus 1 is cosecant squared theta, and for similar reasons to what we have going on right there. Um, you should also be aware of sum and difference formulas. We're going to use sum and difference formulas. Uh, the two that come to mind, cosine of a plus b is cosine a, cosine b minus sine a, sine b. Uh, similarly, the sine of a plus b is sine a, cosine b plus cosine a, sine b. If you'd like to prove those, and I imagine some of you do, that is the worst unit circle ever. Let's just say that. It's the worst unit circle ever. I should just get a circle tool that does that stuff for me. So consider the following. You take the point 1, 0, you rotate by some angle alpha, and you get some point with those coordinates. That's your angle alpha. And then you get some other angle beta. You rotate to over here. Uh, this is the point with coordinates cosine alpha plus beta, sine alpha plus beta. Uh, and then just for kicks and giggles, you say, hey, the cosine of a plus b, that's, that's this thing right here. The cosine of a plus b, this thing, has to relate somehow to sines and cosines of a's and b's. So this matters. And just to add fun and excitement to the picture, that's negative beta. This is the cosine of negative beta and the sine of negative beta. And we can prove without too much trouble that the cosine of negative beta is the same as cosine of beta. And the sine of negative beta is the negative of the sine of beta. So here's your strategy. The black segment has the same length as the purple segment. And if you use the distance formula on the black segment and the purple segment, and you set some things equal, and you square both sides, you will prove those theorems are true. So for our purposes, for right now, you have to know how to generate the cosine of 5 pi over 12. You have to know how to generate the cosine of 5 pi over 12. 
what angles that we know about could we combine somehow to get the cosine of 5 pi over 12, uh, or the sine of 7 pi over 12. I'll give the hint on this one. Those angles add up to 7 pi over 12. Just something to think about. Okay, you have to know how to do that. Uh, also of some importance are our double angle formulas. The sine of a double angle is 2 sine theta cosine theta. Oh, really? 2 sine theta cosine theta. Um, that comes directly from here, where A and B are both theta. Okay. Uh, likewise, the cosine of 2 theta, well, there's several representations for that. Some people know it like this. But because sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is 1, you could also write it like this or like that. You should be familiar with those forms. And for this reason, the cosine squared of an angle is 1 plus the cosine of the double angle over 2. And... The sine squared of theta is 1 minus the cosine of the double angle over 2. Things you ought to know. You ought to be aware of that. Okay. Um, one more thing. We should talk about trig functions. If this is a times the sine of b times x minus c plus d. What does all of that mean? Well, this is the easiest thing to figure. This is the vertical shift. You know that when you add d to an equation, it moves all the y values up by d. d is what we affectionately refer to as the midline. It's the line that runs through the middle of the trig function. This will work for sine functions and cosine functions. Uh, this guy. This guy is what we call the amplitude if you took high school trigonometry. Uh, the trick with that, of course, is that we give it an interesting name when it comes to trig functions, but all that really is is the vertical stretch. Remember, this is a number multiplied by some original function. So when you multiply a number by, a, by some original function, this is a vertical dilation, and that's all it does. It takes the standard sine graph and stretches it so the y values are a times as big as they used to be. Third, this thing is the phase shift or the horizontal shift of the trig function. So if the function has been moved to the right by some value c, then, then that's going to pop up like this in an equation. So that leaves us with this. This is what we call the frequency. The frequency is the number of sine curves that we will see in a 2 pi window. But you are best known, well, this is best known to you in terms of period. The period of a trig graph, the period of a sine graph or a cosine graph is the horizontal distance necessary to complete one cycle. That is period. So to find period, for a sine graph or a cosine graph, we take 2 pi and divide it by frequency. Okay? Okay. So here's the thing. Let's get rid of all this. What if I graph this function Think for a moment. When I hit 
the enter button, what kind of a graph should pop up? Hit the pause button, think about it. Amplitude, frequency, phase shift, vertical shift, what kind of graph should I get? Okay, did you hit the pause button? I know you did, okay. So, sure enough, I've got the, oh no I don't. You're so good. Let's try that. Yeah, there we go. This minus one, this minus one, that's the midline running right through the center of the graph. Three is the distance from the top and the midline, distance from the top to the midline. I'm going to see two cycles in a 2 pi window. This is about 2 pi, and I've got two cycles in there. So the period is pi, and you can tell that because from a bottom to a bottom, that's about, yeah, that's about pi. And then that graph has been shifted to the right by pi over 2. Awesome. So this went a little longer than I thought it would, but it's a good primer on trigonometry. We'll see you soon.